Um, I think that that fail fast approach works in consumer internet businesses, but I don't think it works for anything that really matters. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Consumer internet businesses are about exploiting psychology. And that is one where you want to fail fast because you know people are unpredictable. And so we want to psychologically figure out how to manipulate you as fast as possible and then give you back that dopamine hit. We did that at, brilliantly at Facebook. Instagram has done it. WhatsApp has done it. You know, Snapchat has done it. Twitter has done it. So there are great examples. WeChat is doing it. There are great examples of Failing fast is the right path to exploiting psychology of mass populations of people. I feel tremendous guilt. Um, I, think we, I think we all knew in the back of our minds, even though we feigned this whole line of like, there probably aren't any really bad unintended consequences. I think in the back, deep, deep recesses of our minds, we, we kind of knew something bad could happen. But I think the way we defined it was not like this. It literally is a point now where I think we have created tools that are ripping apart the social fabric of how society works. That is truly where we are. And I would encourage all of you as the future leaders of the world to really internalize how important this is. If you feed the beast, that beast will destroy you. If you push back on it, we have a chance to control it and rein it in. And it is a point in time where people need to hard break from some of these tools and the things that you rely on. The short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops that we have created are destroying how society works. No civil discourse, no cooperation, misinformation, mistruth, and it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian ads. This is a global problem. So we are in a really bad state of affairs right now, in my opinion. It is, it is eroding the core foundations of how people behave by and between each other. Um, and I don't have a good solution. You know, my solution is I just don't use these tools anymore. I haven't for years. It's created huge tension with my friends, huge tensions in my social circles. Um, if you look at like, you know, my Facebook feed, I probably haven't, I've posted maybe two times in seven years, three times, five times, it's like just, it's less than 10. Um, and it's weird, I guess I kind of just innately didn't want to get programmed. And so I just turned, tuned it out, but I didn't confront it. And now to see what's happening, it's really, it really, it really bums me out. Like think about, like there were these examples where, um, there was a hoax in WhatsApp where um, in some like village in India, um, people were like afraid that their kids were gonna get kidnapped, et cetera. And then there were these lynchings that happened as a result where people were like vigilante running around. They think they found the person and they, I mean, I mean, seriously? Like that's what we're dealing with. You know, Im imagine like when you take that to the extreme where, you know, bad actors can now manipulate large swaths of people to do anything you want. It's just a, it's a really, really bad state of affairs. And we compound the problem, right? We curate our lives around this perceived sense of perfection because we get rewarded in these short-term signals, hearts, likes, thumbs up, and we conflate that with value and we conflate it with truth. And instead what it really is is fake brittle popularity that's short term and that leaves you even more, and admit it, vacant and empty before you did it. Because then it forces you into this vicious cycle where you're like, what's the next thing I need to do now? Because I need it back. Think about that compounded by two billion people. And then think about how people react then to the perceptions of others. It's just a, it's a really bad. It's really, really bad. It sounds like you're taking deep personal responsibility also in, in being a part of it. I kind of, look, I did, a, I, did what I, I did a great job there. And I think that business overwhelmingly does positive good in the world. Where I have decided to spend my time is to take the capital that they rewarded me with and now focus on the structural changes that I can control. 
I can't control that. I can control my decisions, which is I don't use this shit. Um, I can control my kids' decisions, which is they're not allowed to use this shit. <laughs> um, and then I can go focus on diabetes and education and climate change. And that's what I can do. But everybody else has to soul search a little bit more about what you're willing to do because your behaviors, you don't realize it, but you are being programmed. It was unintentional, but now you gotta decide how much you're willing to give up, how much of your intellectual independence. And don't think, oh yeah, not me, I'm fucking genius, I'm at Stanford. You're probably the most likely to fucking fall for it. Because <laughs> you were fucking checkboxing your whole goddamn life. No offense, guys. <laughs> Amassing capital to me is about finding a smart, useful solution to a very hard, practical problem and being slow and methodical. And again, this is what I'm saying. You have to rewire your brain for that to be okay. How do you, in year two or year five, <clears throat> come back to this room for your, what is it called when they, you get reunion? reunion. Um, and say I'm still working on the same thing, and when somebody says, and how's it going, you have the courage to say it's hard. I haven't figured it out yet, I don't know. But if you figure it out, and you have this moderate growth, moderate compounding, that is the key. That is like, that's gold. You know, I look at like our returns, and it's so funny, because it's like, you can get so enthralled by IRRs in our business. And like, you know, I have, I have friends who, who run other organizations and they're like, oh, we posted 92% IRR. And I'm like, well, you can't eat IRR. Uh, what does it really mean? And when you unpack it, what you realize is like, fast money returns can completely really decay long-term thinking and sound judgment. And so I'm like, wow, I would really love to just compound at 15% a year. And the reason is because if I can do that for 50 years, that's 250 fucking billion dollars, like some crazy number. Like it's just enormous. So it's like slow and steady against hard problems. Start by turning off your social apps and giving your brain a break. Because then you will at least be a little bit more motivated to not be motivated by what everybody else fucking thinks about you. Do you know what I'm saying? It's hard. Think about how all this stuff plays together. How does trying to get, you know, uh, Posting your fucking waffles online relate to me starting a business and accumulating capital. This is wiring your brain for super fast feedback. It's the same brain you're using to build a company. Don't think they're not the same. Do you know what I'm saying? No, yes, no, <laughs> yes, yes, right? You have one brain. So you're training your brain here, whether you think it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you acknowledge it or not, acknowledge that these things where you're spending hours a day are rewiring your psychology and physiology in a way that now you have to use to go and figure out how to be productive in the commercial world. So if you don't change this, you are going to get the same behaviors over here. Change this. There's a reason why Steve Jobs was like anti-social media. I am telling you I'm not on these fucking apps. I'm not him by any stretch of the imagination. But I am proactively trying to rewire my brain chemistry to not be short-term focused. I'm telling you they're linked. 